right. Sorry about that, traders. This is Doc from North America. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's uh, 831, going on 832 in the East Coast here in the U.S. of A. And in, to uh, in Tokyo, uh, it's uh, 1032 in the evening. Just to give you a flavor of the different financial areas of the world, there it is. All right, uh, it's TGIM. Thank goodness it's Monday, and here I am again. And we're trying to get our game together. A lot of interesting news out there, but not on the markets, which is kind of interesting, you know, because, uh, you know, not interesting. It's just uh, a fact. They're just not that active at the moment. Let's see if we can fix this, too. Get, or, uh, let's get the sound. Make sure I have the chat line up for if anybody cares to jump in or they all feel the same way as I do. <laughs> Toasty, toasty type of thing. There we are. Uh, toasty, toasty. All right. Uh, as you see there, there's the dollar index. The dollar's up a little bit this morning. Hey, Giannis, how you doing? Yeah, the dollar is just kind of pulsating. You know, it's a, I guess it's trying to get going on some level. Nothing major. You know, and uh, let's put it up on uh, Chicago Quant. Let's see what the Chicago Quant is trying to tell us. Also at the same time, um, do I? I don't even have. Do I? Have, am I even sharing into that? Let's see if I'm sharing into that. Uh, where is it at? Let's push that button. There it is, right there. Uh, where is that at? I thought I had it up on there. Oh, maybe that's it right there. There we go. Okay. Oh yeah. So I was looking at the James Webb. James Webb has come out with even more. You know, it's like. It's if it was a sport, if it was European football, it'd be like James Webb, Electric Universe, you know, fifty two, and mainstream physics and cosmology, nothing, nil. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Now they're going. Look at the the title of it this morning. I'm just deviating a little bit here, but it just says James Webb Telescope appears to be finding multiple galaxies out there that grew too massive too soon after the what they call the Big Bang, and that's a TV show, I believe, in the United States. Anyhow, it surely isn't any type of scientifically proven theory. It's a, uh, it's a speculation, I guess that's what it is. But anyway, let's get over to the trading there and see what the dollar looks like. All right, and that is Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Turkish Lira against the uh, Euro. But no, let's see what the dollar looks like. There's yours, Janos. There's the... Uh, the uh, S&P 500, kind of a little weak this morning, nothing major. I wouldn't even call it weak. It's just, you know, kind of drifting around, doing nothing, and on the minus side at the moment. Uh, there is the dollar index right there. And you can see on Friday we talked, uh, got to fix that frame there again. On Friday we talked about how it was just going sideways. You know, it wasn't, uh, you can see on J4X over there, it was red. Uh, where's that mouse on? There's the mouse right there. You see that red going on there. And then over here, um, the uh, same thing was going on. It was a little bit firmer. You know, there was some some strength in it. I think we were seeing some bonds lift a little bit. I think it was there. There's the, was that, that's, so where's Friday at? Where did Friday go? There's the 7th. There's the 10th. Where is Friday. Okay. Oh, there's the Friday. Okay, so that's Friday. So they lifted it up on Friday. But we had a red and a green, which means that the wavelengths and, you know, my Doc's magic kind of thing was telling us that uh, the mechanics were getting ready to change from this little downtrend that's going on. And then today you can see we've made a new, you know, a higher high from Friday, but that's nothing really meaningful. You can see our algorithm itself, again, showing strength, trying to break through, as you see in the same thing over here on J4X. You see the same thing. You see the green line breaking through this uh, goldish, yellowish dotted dashed line going on there, which is the slow stochastic versus the fast stochastic. Here it represents the fast. We don't have the fast algorithm up there. We just have the slow one on that. And it just shows you that the slow algorithm is breaking through the zero line. Right there. Just That's why our math is always ahead of everybody. I was telling somebody at lunch yesterday. Our, my math is faster than, what do they call it, speed trading? They have a name for it. What is it when they're trading with inside a second? Let me think what that is. 
high speed high speed trading high speed frequency trading fine busy though a lot of going on i bet i need to even use a vacation days to get everything done no oh, i hear you there it's like you know it never stops does it you are sharing only j4x okay there it is right now okay there we are back up hey robin uh yeah so yeah i hear you it's a, it's like uh the never ending action always going on in our lives we do our best to keep on uh, marching forward and that's pretty much the name of the game uh and trading and so forth and that's what's so nice about our charts and the one on j4x that we developed it makes it easier for people to trade without being trapped like they have to stare at it all day long you know they they can look at these algorithms here the, the slow and fast stochastic and the uh the hinky ashky bars and have a general flavor of where the trend is and if they put binaries on or option spreads on they don't have to be you know they can be doing other things you know lifting the lift lift that bail tote that you know no you're gonna be doing other things so um yeah i hear you that is the life the way it rolls yo 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 all right so as you can see here we're firm and what we're seeing is if we do a quick flash over to the 30-year bond uh you're gonna see you know it's it's when this is going down, interest rates are rising. So interest rates have been rising again. I know you keep on hearing how interest rates are dropping, and they did generally back in March. It started in March, and you see as this rises, interest rates drop, and then it you know digests. They take profits, and then it rises again, and then they take profits. And the question is, will there be a higher low, and this will be the base, and they'll turn up, or are they going to go into like a stall motion uh, because they're not sure? You know, uh, the betting is, I hate to call it that. I used to get yelled at when I was a trading clerk, you know, to refer to it as betting. Um, the educated investing train of thought is, that's what they told me it was. It's called the educated investing concepts. That's what it is. It should be possible to get email or at Sims notification for them just like uh, price action. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, alerts for indicators and cross. Uh, my, I have software that does that. Yeah, my software does that. It'll tell me when one crosses over to the other. It'll email me. It actually emails me. Yeah. Matter of fact, my son is working on. Rob and I have been talking about. It. My son is working on. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a challenge between my two sons. My one son, who uh, does some form of programming, because there's different multitudes of programming. He's writing a whole new platform for me and incorporating in our algorithms my other son who used to program in korea yes an american programming in korea and we're not korean uh he has a challenge he says that how long it takes my first son to do it he wants to know when when it ends and then he thinks he can do it in 30 minutes <laughs> So my first son, who's doing it right now, has been programming for about, I guess what, Robin, this is going on the second week now, I guess it is? Last Friday was not, was it last Friday? Or two Fridays ago? I think it's two Fridays ago. So so it's like on the second full week now of him doing the programming. And my my second son, who does architecture and programming, says to him, in front of, us, in front of him, he says to us at dinner one night, he goes, well... Let me know when Jeff's done, because then I'm going to do it, and I probably can do it between 20 minutes and a half hour. <laughs> so I love the challenge of the two. I said to Robin, we're going to get something. I'm sure it's going to be good, because he's the one brother's breathing down the back of the other brother. <laughs> so you have two different programmers battling away. Oh, hey, Matthew, you want to look at volatility? Yeah, let's head over to that. There we go, right there. Oh, no, not right there. Here it is. Here's it, here's it come. Here it comes. As I'm going, sipping my tea. I'm sipping my tea. I use it as a, a point to cheat to sip my tea. Yo, George, I just saw you. It's one of those lazy Mondays. Blue fast line on weekly into top manifold and daily green line 
Went into sell on the daily. Oh, yes, yeah, silver. We'll take a look at that while we're. Oh, there, there's a. Let me just give you a flash of that. We'll go back to it. Since I, I, I missed yours. You were first in line. But I missed it. Let me just show you live right now. There it is right there. Yeah, well, it's okay. That's not dangerous, okay? It just shows that there's some pressure coming in. That's. You see where it starts to break down. And Friday, it breaks down on the histogram, too. And, you know, a little weakness and it goes into a daily sell. And that's no problem. We'll go back to that, though. I want to go back because I accidentally started on the wrong one in line, and I don't want to shake Metho. So let's give Metho, and then I'll take that apart. We'll probably try to investigate that even more. Uh, where is it at? I just opened up the wrong one. Okay, there it is, Metho. There it's, oh, that's Bitcoin there. See, Bitcoin's trying to push into the cell, too. Uh, there's the VIX. Now, let me say this about the VIX, and, and trust me, George, I won't forget you. You're next. We're going to take... The, and you were really in line first, I think. Yeah, you definitely were. Your question was first. Sorry about that. Um, you can see there the volatility... Remember, volatility is like gold and silver. So this, is a, this could be an analogous of the conversation for both traders. Remember, the central banks do not want... And the Federal Reserve in particular do not want gold and silver to go up. Okay, they want it to be steady, they want it to be firm, but they don't want it to go where traders like ourselves, you and me, think it should be. You know, I think it should be between $5,000 and $10,000 an ounce at this point. Um, but they don't want that, and the reason, and they can, they can control it to a great extent and force it not to. But, as you noticed, when you try to buy physical metal, it's trading at a 30% haircut, as we, we uh, not a haircut, a 30% premium. So in other words, the, the, the paper contracts traded at like a 30% discount. And then when we go and look at gold, right now gold's up in the 21s and 22s going into next year. They've got a, you know, it's a big contango going on on the price range, okay? And so what they do is they can control these things. They can control VIX. They can control the metals because they have uh, the power to do so and the way they're measured. A, VIX is measured by... The at the money's call and put, then the in the money's call and put, and the wings as they call them, the outer calls and puts. Okay, they'd look at each one of the each of those strike price option premiums, and they figure out what the volatility is using, you know, a volatility program, or they use Black and Scholes, or they use something of that nature. Okay, so you know, volatility has a natural tendency to go down because they don't want it to go up. Okay, they want it, everything to be passive. Okay, and the only reason we saw high volatility back in February of uh, 2020 was because of they wanted to get put those naked put sellers out of business. I mean, not beside you know they, I think it's the classic Democrat Party theory: never allow uh, uh, a, a disaster or uh, you know a, a calamity go to waste. In other words, use it, you know, use it to blame the other side or you know create a new law or do something you know in other words so never and and so what happens is that uh, um there was an opportunity to get you know the federal reserve was not happy that they were making billions of dollars by selling puts naked against them because what that did is that pushed up volatility they didn't like that okay so they knocked them out of it and that's the only reason volatility was that high and they're not going to really they can now they they plow free dollars overnight into funds who will do what they're told to do okay like a citadel citadel will carry positions overnight every night because they get maybe a billion billion and a half overnight for free they don't pay anything for it if they hold the position that the fed wants they keep it again the next night if they hold the position for the whole month they get it the next night <laughs> If they hold it for the whole year the way the Fed wants, they get it the next night. <laughs> you know, that's all it comes down to. Do what the Fed wants, and they hold the positions. And then the uh, the, uh, the Fed can plow money, or let's say this, the Fed can park money overnight into places, and people don't really pay attention to it or know about it. Okay? So Citadel and all these other funds get a lot of, and banks. Matter of fact, I heard, here's a good example. I understand that Charles Schwab was at one point the sixth largest bank in the United States. And the reason why? The Federal Reserve had plowed so much money into them overnight, every night, 
that it just expanded their uh, their value, and that now they're handing it back and you know getting out of that problem. So that's that's what that is. Okay, so so uh, Metho, uh, when you look at the vol, you know I I I've told you before, uh, Janos looks at it the same way, you know, like like you do, looking at it, and I said, do not, you know, it might have been it was like in the twenties, and you were saying to me, you know, oh it's going to rally. I was like, no, it won't rally. They don't want it to rally now. We had action here in March, and we got it up into the 30s because of, what was it? Banking disaster, right? You know, the couple of major, uh, re a couple of regional banks had major problems, and so people reached in and bought the vol. But it takes a calamity to force these things to go up in value and move, okay? Uh, they'll stay inside of a range, like probably more likely like the 15, 16, 17 area something like that all the way up into the, the low 25s you know would they get to 30 30 used to be like you know you know oh my god it breaks 30 it's going to the moon it's like no it's not going to the moon so no i don't i don't see anything there we watch we can you know what metho we can uh, i'll do this even if when you don't chime in what i'll do is every day i will put a chart up of the vix for a, like a few minutes at the end or somewhere in the middle or whenever i can get to it and I'll throw it up there, and this way you can go to the video and take a quick look at it if you don't make it into the video that day. This way you can see it, okay? Oh, what are you doing? You're, do you're buying vol? Uh, uh, is it, you're doing what? Let me see this. And, and thank you, George. We'll be right there again, and I'll give you my my riff on silver. Uh, okay, thanks. And a I'm averaging down vol every point down a new position. All right, yeah, so... Well, you probably, you could, you know, remember, we're coming, you know, we're in the middle of April. Remember, there's an old Wall Street adage, you know, sell in May and go away. So, it could go sideways. You might want to turn them into uh, trapezoids or bear spreads or broken, what are they, they call them broken wing butterflies or, you know, something like that. You know, because you want, you want some time decay. If you're buying the VIX ETF, then you're fine. It won't expire on you. But if you're buying options, you've got to compensate for that decay. You know the beta, the uh, the uh, the, the uh, 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 vega, the vega itself. You got to worry about beta particles or something else. <laughs> Different type of physics. Okay, there we go. Okay, and is, and that must be an ETF you're using, right? You're not buying the options. You're ETFing it into into a. Is there a VIX? Uh, is there a ETF VIX you're doing it to, or the futures contract? See if you do it to the futures contract or the. Uh, or an ETF, you have no problem because you don't have that decay situation to really worry about. Okay. I'll wait for that answer. To, uh, futures, good. Yeah, so you can get away with that. And then, it, then uh, especially down in here, more than likely, what's the low we've had? We had a low here of, uh, what was that, 1770, right? And we're at 1707, so they're making a new low there. And then, where's the last low? Right in here, back in 2022 of April of last year, the low was 18 and change. I wouldn't be surprised we get down into there. And, and you can see our work. We're in a weekly sell. Let's fix that up like that. You can see we're in a weekly sell. We've been in red dots galore in a daily sell for a while. You know, it may make a new range, try to shake out the weak hands. And you are not a weak hand. So you can, uh, you can dollar cost average into it. And then from there, uh, you know, You've you've shown the skill set to be able to manage your your equity correctly, so you'll have no problem with that because sooner or later it will bottom. We'll just keep an eye on when look you know look how far down you got the fast algorithm trying to let's widen this out for you. The fast algorithm right at the moment is trying to pop as you see it right there. So we are seeing something now. If the slow algorithm starts to turn up at the same time, uh, then and we start to see something up here on the daily. You know, uh, you you might start to get some opportunity, and you might your average might start to uh, you know increase, you know, on the equity the uh, you know appreciation side. So I hear you there. We'll keep an eye on it with you. Uh, what Metho says uh, the rollovers are the problem. Well, oh yeah, because what are they? The contango, right? Yeah, yeah, because they have a remember they they are decaying. You know what you could do is you could go out and sell some calls against it too. You know, do some call spreads way up top, way up top, you know, and let the decay compensate for the contango. Think about that. It won't hurt you 
Because I mean, if I imagine if you know if it, if it moves from seventeen to twenty five, you'll be a happy camper. Even if it probably goes to seventeen to twenty two, you'll be a happy camper. But you know, and if you go out and do something like the you know three months out or four months out or five months out on the twenty fives and thirties as a call spread or a binary, then that compensates for the what they call the Vega and the Theta, the Vega and the Theta. I want. I think I want to break out in song. Hmm. All right. Uh, now let's go to George. All right. Now George again. Uh, that quick little synopsis I gave you on the silver. Silver rod. I say I know it's going to start to break out in song. Uh, let's see. There's the silver. Is that the silver? That's the silver. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it. The fast is breaking down, but it's not below the zero line. It is starting to dip below the the manifold. We'll see what that means over the next couple of days because you know we've we've seen we saw here when they tried to put this bottom in when it was in the low 20s we saw what's that four days of selling then they they literally fell apart look at the not fell apart what's the word i, I use for it what's that they they plateaued you know like a, a base they based right there look at that they based you know it just just did not move you can see that base in there and then we got into the daily buy, and you can see at that point, the um, the uh, the fast moving algorithm was starting to hug the manifold, and you can see that the green, the slow moving algorithm was starting to turn up just mildly. And at this point, obviously they they've been trying to roll over just now this week, and the fast has been rolling over. So the question is. Does this fool around like this a little bit longer and then turn up? I'm trying to think of what's in the news. You know, we have a lot of banking earnings coming out. So that's the big noise, you know. So we'll see what they say from there. Uh, you know, what, what influences are on. I'm trying to think what else is in the news. Right now, it's the first part of, usually it used to be Alcoa. It used to be the big, big uh, player. And that was like an industrial thing. We would watch Alcoa and it was a Dow stock and we would watch to see how it reacted on the you know the every quarter as you know earnings because you know would kind of measure the economy that's when you know as Janos would say is that when fundamentals meant something <laughs> isn't fun <laughs> Janos is totally right there when funny when fundamentals used to mean something you know and, and that's a sad part of it all so uh let's see uh, Metho says without the contango uh it would be an easy game yeah, well, you got that discounting thing going on. You got a you know a back month volatility. Remember, you can't exercise the future. You can't exercise the options. The options are a European option. So if you can't exercise them, then what happens is that uh, funds bet against uh, the the short term moves. Now, when you can exercise it, they've got to keep the moves. They've got to uh, they got to allow the movement uh, to control the action. But when it's a European exercise, then it, it uh, you can you can disregard if you think okay the volatility is going to be up for three or four days and then I'm, it'll probably back off. You see you see sometimes the volatility doesn't lift and you're like, why isn't this lifting? <laughs> Dow just fell you know 500 points. Why isn't this lifting? You know that type of thing. And it's like well 500 points honestly is not anything meaningful. It's just background noise as far as I'm concerned. The Dow has to really drop about a thousand points for my eyes to look up and think that something is really bad. Uh, at this point, I don't, you know, that's that's my. I've been saying this at the webinar here for I don't know a couple of years now. They don't, and I, I think I went on a litany of this. Wasn't that part of that ramble, Janos, about a week ago of mine, about the idea that uh, I think I just had a kitty cat Alzheimer's moment. I just forgot what I was talking about. Uh, what was it? The the back month. Oh yeah, back month and exercise. That's what it is. So the uh, the back month exercise. Uh, when you when you can't exercise a underlining product, they will sometimes just let it float. In other words, they'll just say, okay, we're not we're not going to really adjust. And then when when you, when when it's an, an American exercise or instant exercise, they have to do something about it. They ha they can't let it discount. Oh, I know what it was. I was thinking in the back of my head, that's the problem with gold and silver. So we look at the back months, they're flying on the upside. But the front month, they're not. Because why? You can't exercise it. All you're doing is getting the futures contract. And then the, to take the delivery is a, a major challenge to take the delivery. So that's what the problem is. You need products. That's why I laugh at the bricks all the time. 
you know, none of them are easy to deliver. If you can't deliver them, then why would you want to trade them? I mean, you can use them for offsets. Like, I just bought this from that country. I don't want their currency. I'm going to sell my yuan or I'm going to buy my yuan and sell their currency. You know, that type of thing. You know, an offset. Let's see. Uh, oh, Giannis says, people forget what they were saying quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's the... Uh, the uh, radiation from the sun that we're getting, I guess. Well, I see. Uh, I, I hear you there. Yeah, I'd gotten lost there. It was like, woo, I had a senior's moment. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. So, but at least I bounced back. Just give me time. <laughs> I'm in the nursing home here, and this is all a fantasy. Uh-huh. Okay, futures in contango. Shortening is better than shortening, uh, shorting spot market prices. Yeah, yeah, because... Because the, they can't exercise them. They're not going to exercise you. But remember, they're going to the, the contango prices are more real. They're more real to reality than the front month. That's the problem. Except for when you're taking like delivery of uh, like crude oil or you know something that's exercisable and used all the time. Something that's that's used all the time, then you have to store it. If you can't store it, then it's a problem. So that's another thing. You know, when it comes to gold. You know, no one's uh, worried about storing it. They don't have it. <laughs> Whereas oil, they're terrified. The next thing you know, they have to, you have to trade certificates. You get a window, but a lot of traders don't want the hassle, so they'll take the paper loss. Uh, they'll take the cash loss. And so, in other words, you can. Let's say you got stuck with a barge of oil. You could you could contact somebody down in uh, Baltimore, or or you no, know, it's out of New York Harbor, so. What you do is you contact someone in Philadelphia or, or Baltimore or something far away, and they may have a barge sitting there full of the same oil, and they have nobody that wants to use it at the moment. And so then you can exchange their certificates, and, and they'll ta they'll be gladly, like, they may grab the New York one, and, you know, uh, they can put it into their tanks up there or something like that. They'll do an exchange thing, and it's an arbitrage of cost, transportation costs more. That, I, I did that years ago. I don't do that anymore. But that's because I was I needed it at the time. But I, that's a long time ago. I don't really pay attention to it anymore. But that can go on. So the contango is always a challenge. You're right. And it depends on the contango. For gold you know, or silver, it's higher. And Robin follows the uh, silver uh, physical because he likes to trade coins. And he says they're always about 33% over the... Uh, the exchange price or what we call the paper price so you know when it comes to buying this stuff physically it, it's definitely a, there's a big uh, haircut you know they're going on 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 the paper side of it so all right uh did i go back to silver okay there's the silver again so um trying to think i didn't didn't really say much more than what i did before but let's just look at it you know uh, I, i'm not too convinced like i know i was looking at this plateau and i was starting to compare it uh or a base i guess you could call it so i guess what we'll do is we'll see if the fast is trying to tell us something more we didn't get a red green which is not you know not you know nothing earth shattering because you know we didn't get a red green down here when it when it turned into the run matter of fact i don't see any red greens let me just go check which algorithm i have no that's in there that's the right one down up Okay, interesting. There's there's not, there's no insight. Uh, there hasn't been a. a red, oh, there's a red green there before that gap. Okay, and there's a red green before the attempt to run up and then a big gap down again. So, but it's not giving us much red and green here. And like there, we didn't get a red and green for this pressure here. We didn't get a red and green for this move up there either. So, you know, it's a very orderly market. You know, in my mind, because we're not getting rash moves, you know, moves that pop out of nowhere. And so the red and green usually identifies that a rash move is coming. So like like right there, it, you know, that was heading down and the rash move is that it's going to start to go back up again. And the rash idea out of that is, or the I, fresh idea of it right there is that it doesn't have the buying power. And then it goes into a cell and it's smash city, you know, gives it all back, takes out the lows, no less. So um, it's very orderly market, 
and we'll see what the fast moving algorithm George is doing and see if it has an effect uh, I'm like everybody else I'm always more of a bull than a bear in this thing even when my math is turning down I my heart <laughs> my heart is a bull I'm not putting my pocket money in there but uh, at that point I'm always hedged for the downside but my heart says please go up because other people love it <laughs> be kind and buy <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's it's hard to believe that metals are even trading in this area. You know, I mean, we should see silver right now at like $40. We should see gold trading at like three or four, five thousand dollars $5,000. You know, with all the goofiness going on with the government. Look at Biden today. What did he do now? He told them, I'm not negotiating again. It's like, uh, you got to negotiate. What's going to happen is, you know, we have plenty of money coming in from taxes and so forth. And, you know, I think I said to you is the deadline in June is not really there because it looks like they have enough capital to carry them all the way out to almost August or mid-August. So, uh, let's see. George says, yeah, a red-green dot signal, a more, many more to come. Well, it, they usually do. It's, 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 it's kind of interesting in silver in particular. They've been kind of thin on that, you know. I, that only, the only thing I can say that would make any sense out of that is that it's orderly. In other words, they're very comfortable. The buyers are comfortable and they're not worried. And the sellers are not joining in. In other words, they're not getting trapped like shorts being trapped, you know. Uh, this is a balance in the world. Yeah, there, it, there is. I just want the, the markets to burn and crash. <laughs> Doesn't every short. <laughs> it's the mantra of every short. You want the world to crash. I hear you. Let it all die. I agree. And I say we hang a few uh, Fed Reserve people, too. So, Doc, you can be as kind-hearted as you want. I know. I know. But I'm still staying in my bunker. <laughs> I'm in my cave, and I refuse to leave. Uh, let's see. Coins. I see a listed cred credit card, almost $60 Silver Eagles at Apex. It doesn't surprise me. A collectible combined? Yeah. What's that? That's You're talking there. It's 100% plus. That's a hundred and uh, what's that? One hundred twelve percent. That's one hundred twelve percent, basically over the cash value, or spot. That is the cash value. Yeah, it's it's a uh, one hundred twelve percent over the spot value of paper paper silver, or you know exchange traded silver. It makes no sense, you know, traders. You know, when you when you look at this stuff, don't think you're crazy. You're not. It doesn't make sense. It is, it's, it's, it's bull, it's bull, bull, uh, yeah, bull hockey pox. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's rubbish. You know, it, these things should be much higher, that, but they can't allow them. And we've talked about this here before. These funds have that in their manifesto, their incorporation manifesto. If they dare to not do what the incorporation manifesto tell is, you know, is stated by them, they created it, they state it in writing. If they don't follow it on some level, they'll be sued. That's what my first son does. He works for the portfolio team at a law firm. And they do class action lawsuits, and he runs the software for it. And, uh, you know, he was a finance major, and uh, and he does the programming uh, also at the same time. So they get two things out of him. And uh, they'll sue and win. He's Like I told you, I, I've told you the stories. When he worked for JPM, uh, subsidiaries of JPM would sue JPM, and the way JP, JPM uh, Chase, uh, you know, executives thought of it is, well, we're taking money from one pocket and putting it in the other. So go ahead, sue. <laughs> they didn't, as far as they were concerned, uh, that's just the way it goes, and, and uh, they they looked at the sunny side of it. If you don't, if you're a hedge fund, if you are a you know, a, a retirement fund or a pension fund or, you know, any type of fund and you have an incorporation. Well, if you don't follow your incorporated manifesto, it won't matter how much money you make. They'll sue you. They will. They'll sue you. The investors will because it's easier to sue than trade. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm a kind-hearted one. Uh, as my mom would say, it's always better to laugh than cry. Let's see. Coins. Yeah. Okay. So we did the coin thing. All right. So, George, did that 
answer your questions about this, this, the uh, downwardly slope of the fast-moving algorithm? I hope it did. And we'll keep, you know, we're not, we're always watching it. We're always keeping, oh, no. Ah! There we go. Let's get that back up again. We're always watching it. There it is. James Webb Telescope Images Challenge Series of How Universe Evolved. It, isn't it great? We, we, I, I said this, what, half a year before the web got up there, the James Webb got up there, I kept on saying to you, it's going to just justify all the math that I keep on talking about here on the webinars and with my other uh, compadres in the, that side of the science world, and it's just going to prove how wrong they are. Matter of fact, I, po I posted something today. Let me show you what I posted if I can find it. Let me do this. We're going to go back to the charts right there. But wait till you see this. There is a slow avocado. Uh, a cavalcade of uh, scientists resigning from the mainstream uh, universities. Let me see where I can find that. And uh, because, you know, they're realizing that they're... Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> the one son just sent something over. The one that's doing the programming for us, Robin, just sent something over on... Uh, he, you know, he's he's big with Elon Musk. They're into the rockets, so... Uh, let me just give him a call cool on that. There we go. What is that? Let's see what else is. Yeah, uh, Starship is getting ready to do a test flight. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Can I move that over to that so you can see it? No, I can't. Okay. So, uh, here, I'll do this. I'll throw it up this way. Here it is. He, this is what he just sent me. Starbase. Starbase directly okay, this employs is live. This more is than 1,800 1, employees and like is actually the largest employer in the area. Yeah, and from that video, you can really tell it's live right now. That's the, because they had the, they had the rocket. The ocean, they just showed me a rocket too. It's on the launch and that's pad. Because being close to the equator uh, is actually a fantastic. Uh, uh, Elon Musk has a private uh, yeah. space I love center. That we have so many it's not far away from that allow us to participate with ocean cleanup and other environmental efforts there. We'd also like to thank Cameron County for being so supportive. All right, let's go over to where was I headed? I was heading to somewhere better, not the Institute of Advanced Study. Let's. Let me go back to that. Let me find that article. I just want to show it to you, just so that you know I'm not crazy and I'm still in the nursing home. Uh, where is it at? Right here. I just want to show you the headline. I thought it was a fascinating thing that we're seeing more and more mainstream uh, uh, institutions start to walk away from, uh, you know, professors, tenures are walking away. Uh, I think I'm drifting again. Let's let me get. Let's do this. Let's get back to the currencies. I don't even think I looked at the euro. That did we look at the euro? Let's go to the euro. I think I'm. I'm. You've got me. See that you did it again. You set, allowed me to go out there into la la land. Me, I just dove down the rabbit hole on you. I'm sorry. Let's get back to the currencies. There we are. Here we go. There is. Uh, let's go to the euro. There is the euro. You're seeing a little weakness in here today. Matter of fact, it backed off yesterday and missed the the daily sell. But I think cable fell into the daily sell. As you can see here, we got the weakness on Friday right there. You see that there. You see the uh, the, the fast moving. Or the, yeah, this is the slow moving algorithm backing off. I don't even put the the fast on there. And then you can see that the fast here <clears throat> is making a challenge to the manifold itself. Just making a move there. I don't think it means anything. And let's put it up on J4X too at the same time. You guys are really kind. You let me really ramble out into outer space there. <laughs> Doc, Doc's really just laying in his bed at the nursing home fantasizing that i'm saying all this stuff i'm not really on a webinar i'm in my fantasy yeah it's like uh shake that globe and watch the snow come down in the little <laughs> snow globe all right there we are so you can see there on j4x you see a little red kicking in today was it still firm just like we were over here on our algorithms you know same game you can see here the the fast is broken down uh today that's that's just one whole day jive and diving down like that we got a red bar and then you can see the price over here on Sh on chicago quant you know breaking down there uh then from there we'll go take out take uh take a peek at cable cable for those that might be relatively new is the british pound against the dollar and so uh you can see they're doing the same thing and what we see over here at the same time is that on Friday, it did slide into the cell. It got into the minus there, as you can see in a nice, cute little box. And since this was designed for atomic theory, it's minus 0 0.00010. <laughs> yeah. Treat them all like isotopes.
All right, and then from the cable, as you see here on uh, J4X, you know, that same situation here, you can see both like the Euro and when you look at the cable, the weekly, you know, it's sort of the, the fastest moving down. It's challenging the the algorithm down on the bottom, you know, the, the manifold itself, but no, no major things really shaking it up at the moment. We'll see. You know, this is probably just digestion. Remember, traders, you buy, you make money, take a profit. And so what you see when the markets go down a little bit here is people taking profits. And then when they make higher lows, then that's obvious that it's taking a profit because they lift back up again. Uh, from there, we look at the Swiss. You can see the Swiss is doing exactly what we've been expecting. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been breaking down. And that fast algo broke down a while ago and didn't get trapped into that slow noise over here where the fast went slow and then it went fast and it went, I mean, it went into a, it went into the sell with the fast and then went into the buy and then it fell back into the sell again and then you know and that's where it's at we're having that problem with uh not cable with the uh, crude oil when we get the crude oil I'll, I'll i'll point it out again there too uh you know we're we're getting a lot of that noise um in this case here you know we got the lows we were looking for we got into the low 88.55 area that's what we were figuring it would do it, and it, it's given us that bounce I, I you know i don't expect to see the swiss franc break that bad you know, I expect to see some weakness, but I don't expect to see, you know, uh, overzealous 10% more weakness than where we're already at. And we've already seen a breakdown from the 101 area down into the 90. That's, you know, over 10% right there. So, you know, it, it, I don't expect to see 80. Let's put it that way. Because I think that would push it out of its bands or envelope where the, I think the central banks want it. So it will, it could go, it could glide down with say the euro and the cable or in, in this case here you know they're all moving in the same direction at the moment all of them are bouncing up as we speak in the sense that they're losing when i say bouncing up the dollar is gaining against them all three of them the dollar is gaining against them so you know it's just a matter of uh, a combination of the algorithm you know you know just taking the profits or becoming comfortable in an, a lower zone again remember we we saw the swiss franc walk go walk about you know it did not follow the cable or the euro because they had domestic problems with the banking system like the u.s had domestic problems you know we have we have the same situation the only difference is that uh you know we uh seem to be able to get out of it because they have so much do re me around here i mean i would be very happy if we were not the world reserve currency but that is not going to happen they're not really that fast to free our you know, free ourselves up, which would be really nice. So, uh, a scientist from Italy just sent something over. It was really funny. I don't. I, I don't. I won't leave, let that take me off course. But, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, that's where we're at when it comes to the Swiss, and you can see, you know, it's going to probably hover around the, underneath here for a while. I just figure it's going to zigzag down here and there's no particular reason because interest rates are towards the end of their adventure. Oh, let's see. Uh, coins. Uh, thanks, Doc. Hey, George, thank you for asking and talk. You know, anytime any of you bring up a subject for me to talk about, makes it makes it better. There's those voices in my head want to take me back to like, you know, cosmology or string theory half the time. So it's like, you know, I'm like, a, I'm like the kitty cat running down the street. And I see a butterfly, and the next thing you know, I go the other direction. You know, basically, this brain just keeps on running. A friend of mine I had lunch with yesterday, she said to me, what did she say? She said, there's a real circus up there, and you're the ringmaster. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I like that. That's really good. There's a real circus up there in that head of yours, and you are the ringmaster. <laughs> four minutes. What's four minutes? Oh, we got some news coming out? T4 minutes. What's coming out today? Is there some news? Let me go take a look at the calendar. Let's see what the, the Ducas Copy calendar says today. Trading. Trading. Where are you? Trading. There it is. Calendar. Yeah, eight, it would, I would have been 830 news, right? No, no, not that. Not that. Wrong one. Launch. Ah, okay. Okay. Launch. Oh! 
Is it is it playing in the background? Can you hear that? I, I left it up. Oh, no, I froze it. Okay. Supportive uh, for there all goes. of our it's work right there. in that area. Can you hear that? Now, Let me see if you can hear that. in addition to Starbase, we'll soon be adding another Texas location to yeah, the SpaceX family. Yeah, he's, We're uh, opening that, a that's the one that's doing the program for us. He's, Texas, well, they're both probably glued to it. To support Starlink hardware production. If they're not both working out of their little factory that they built. It's like 30 feet by 15 feet. They have a factory, a little teeny factory. We have all kinds of machines running, kind of manufacturing things. For technicians and leadership. Arms. Manufacturing engineers they're building robots. My kids roles. are building robots. Basically, well, if you kids. can think of a role, they're in their 30s. But they're building it. robots. So if you're interested uh, in helping Terminator, human I keep on saying Skynet. Here comes Skynet. Uh oh. It was Skynet's being created by Doc Sun. Oh no. Well, I ain't getting naked and traveling back in time. Forget that. With Zach down at Starbase one last time before launch. Howdy, Zach. Oh, yeah, cool. Hello, Kate and Shiva again. You can really feel the energy right here there. at South Padre Island as second. more of the SpaceX team have right gathered. There. There it is. Uh, we're standing yeah, just over five miles the away there. from there the launch right pad. And West so Texas. from here, we've got a very nice view. Um, there we go. Skynet built by the Rosenbergs. <laughs> Amazing. Oh uh, no. Terma Rosenberg. All right. Let's see. Terminator Berg. All right. Uh, where are we at now? Let's go check out the yen. See what the yen is up to. There's the yen. Uh, you can see the yen. It's, it's sideways to the. Uh, let's get over there again. There's the yen. It's kind of seems to have peaked out again. Maybe I can't, I'm a little surprised to see the strength that we do see in it. Um, they're the only major uh, bank or you know central bank in the in the world now trading bonds all the way up to one year or two year in the minus. You know, words, you don't get interest. You have to pay interest to own their bonds. So talk about a closed society. Uh, from there, you know, we see it over here on J4X the same way. Where are you, J four X eight? Right there. There it is. Same way, you know. It's it, in this case here. It's still firming up. You got the green, uh, but you can see that the al fast algorithm has been underneath, giving us a warning. We did get that sell there, and it just kind of bounced up against it. Over here, we're still in the buy, and we'll see when they break down. You can see that fast is trying to penetrate the top of the uh, uh, nonlinear manifold there. Uh, the full name I gave it. This is one I, I googled and wikied it, try to make sure that no one had to use these words. So it's what I refer to it now as the, which I labeled it as, as the nonlinear time manifold. That's what it is, since there is no such thing. So I kind of I like uh, yeah, Rocky Balboa. You know, I kind of uh, I kind of invented it. Yeah, South Paul, South Philly, South Jersey. All right. So from there, we'll go over to the Turkish Lira. And there is the Turkish Lira. You see, oh, that's cool, red one. I like that. You know, this thing is just like literally a case study on how to wreck your currency. It's gone from $1 to $21 uh, to, to own one. In this case here, it's the other way around. Uh, and this is the Euro. So you used to be able to buy a Euro, one Euro to one Turkish Lira. And here we are, you fast forward uh, half a decade, and now you can buy uh, 21 Turkish Liras with one Euro. <laughs> That's an ouch. That's an official ouch. I'm surprised when you don't touch it. They launched? Let's see what's going on. I won't see if I can kill the sound, though. I, I would basically say these are some of the best front row seats you could get. Thank and might I add... A, a, Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Let's see what's going on. Oh, it's it must have already launched. No, that's odd. They're not showing me anything. It's just giving me SpaceX. Oh, you know what? There it is. Okay. God, I love that liquid nitrogen over there on the right side. <laughs> Give me an industrial chemical to play with. And I'll build you something fun. There it is. It's Starship right there. 
Yeehaw! Uh, that's a nice view. That's a nice capsule. Yeah, see those foils they use in space once they get out of orbit. They can use those to adjust their angles. They probably have jets on. I think that's on the way home, actually. That's that's landing. That's a landing situation, not, not a space thing. That's what that is. That's a landing thing. Because this way, as you come down, you can balance your uh, your wiggle, I guess you could call it. That's that, that's that no-go, go, no-go. Go, no you're trying to control the go, no-go. That's what you're trying to do. That's a... That is old math. That's a, uh, you know, I always mumble about that. I use a little Gauss in here in my math, to my math also. Gauss was an incredible, just an incredible scientist, uh, mathematician, I'm sorry, mathematician. Just an incredible mathematician. He died like in 1680 or something like that, and he published papers for another 25 years in mathematics that's respected to this day. Can you imagine doing that? Talk about candle power hell baby that was pretty big candle power all right and there obviously had no tv to play with or internet all right from there we slide over to what's the next currency to do the next currency is uh the two that follow the uh oh we're already where are we at it's 23 we got plenty of time uh we look at the canadian dollar there's the canadian dollar you know, it's still in that slow draw down. It's been driving down. And obviously, when that's driving down, over here, uh, we'll show you uh, crude oil. Crude oil has a natural tendency to go up. See, it's been going up. We're flirting with a daily sell there today. There's another one of them that's been having its issues. You know, it goes into a buy, both of them. And then what happens, let's bring that zero line down right there. And then you notice that uh, we get a... A little wiggle out of that so then we have to go back to go no go and get it to straighten out because of the vibration and then what you get is you get uh, this action again going on you know it gets right back in there and the fast tells us forget about it not into it not gonna be that worried about it stay long or you be wrong be long or be wrong me and mr. T all right then uh, where do we go from here let's go over to South Africa Let's see what the rand is up to to say. Uh, the rand is up to today. I would assume just a wild, you know, because I'm not. You know, I didn't look at it yet, but you have to assume that if the if the gold is going down, then the rand has to be going up. So that's the wrong one. It's going over to another. And let's say just say okay, 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 okay. Uh, right there. Not there. Oh, let me do this. Too. Let me close out the. Oh, there you go. Look at that. You're getting a bounce, uh, uh, Metho on the uh on the um uh volatility and uh, let me go back to there there it is south african ran there she is right there and you can see she's up a little bit from yesterday trying to do that same thing still in the daily cell notice the fast has jumped up out of nowhere you know went into the cell here with that weakness there and then then the fast turned up but look at that there's a couple products we've looked at lately now that we talk about the fast algorithm versus the slow on a weekly basis it's interesting to watch the um, sometimes the the fast doesn't follow the slow so fast yeah too many words in there as fast but in the end result is that the the fast drags itself out you know the more advanced uh, or the the greater rate of change how's that <laughs> instead of saying fast the delta of the change <laughs> let's use rocket science words and um you know it, that fast uh, is not marching and then it does that bust out but at this point this thing's going down you can see the manifold contracting too at the same time and when this thing contracts usually you get that's like you know what uh metho that's one of the things you want to watch too on the let's go back to that you want to watch the, the manifold itself yeah george check this out uh where is it at it's right there no say okay 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 there it is right there when a manifold starts to tighten up or widen it means something's changing look at that interesting thing going on right there it's starting to widen out pretty fast and it's you no know, look at the the look you know it's above this area already it's a mirror image so they're going to be equal in distance to the zero line they're mirror images. One is a minus, one's a plus. And so, so as this thing starts to widen, it tells us that something's coming in. You might get 
Metho, instant gratification on your dollar cost averaging down. Delayed now? Ah, yeah, I got that. I can see the picture of that. They got it sitting there. Lift off to expected hard oh, oh, ocean landing for Starship. They're, they're, yeah, they, they're extrapolating the whole move, and so they're worried about the waves in the ocean you know, because it's going to land on that platform that's out in the ocean. So that's what they're, they're having issues with. They have issues. Yeah. Lift off to an expected hard ocean landing for Starship. That's what's the problem. That's the issues. Whether we end the test. I see they got a T minus going on still. Let's see if we can move that up. They definitely have a T minus going on. There it is. T minus 38, 38 minutes now. So. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. This is a, this is an automation of it. Into flight. No, they cut their sound off, so it's not driving everybody crazy. So, but yeah, uh, uh, Metho and George, that pay attention to the manifold. Sometimes that can, you know, Robin will remind me. He'll go, look at the manifold; it's really tight. I go, oh yeah. <laughs> like this one here, it gets tight and it finds a way to break the lows with no problem over a four-week period. Okay, so there it is, right there. So. Where the hell is he parking this thing? He must be building a base off continent at this point. Where was that? I got to Can we play that animation back again? Here we go. Let's see. Let's see if we can play that animation back again. Yeah, look at this. So what's he doing? We're going to hope to see the super heavy se separation of the starship. Let's see. Spacecraft. Yeah, there's that tilt to get back. That's that go, no go. On your screen, the fins control that. That realigns it. That's what those fins are up on the capsule. Uh, and then, where the hell is it going? It goes from the Gulf of Mexico. Cuts across what? Over the Indian Ocean. Yeah. Cuts across the Indian Ocean. And I thought I recognized that chain. Oh, Hawaii. Is that, is that Hawaii? Where is that? It looks like the Hawaiian chain. Is he landing in Hawaii? Cool. Oh, I like Elon. I've never met him, but I uh, have a friend that went to school with him at graduate school. I've heard some interesting stories. All right. Uh, where do we go from here? Let's go to... Oh, we've already done that. Uh, we did that. Let's do this real quick. We're going to go do a, run, do a run and gun. Let's do a quick run and gun. Uh, gun done. And, oh, <laughs> my crazy's coming out on the screen again there. All right, and then, uh, let's see. Let's do a run and gun and take a look at, uh, what is it? Right here. We, didn't, we did silver and gold. Let's take a look at uh, copper real quick. And let's look at natural gas. Let's do, there's copper. Copper is kind of mixed, trying to break down also with the gold. The weekly is fine, no problems there. Let's take a look at, uh, we'll say platinum for tomorrow. Let's take a look at Nat Gaz. Nat Gaz is, uh, ooh, look at that. It was looking firm this morning. I put the green line in there. Look at that. Look at the speed of that. The manifold is widening for like the last week now. Maybe we get a bot. Hey, Metho. Your nose smells money. Hey, brother, I think I see the same thing. Robin, we, I think we need to start taking uh, a peek at Nat Gaz again. Definitely. I think we got to look at Nat Gaz. Time to ETF. All right, where else do we go? Oh, let's take out, as Ra, as, uh, as Giannis would say, my girlfriend. Let's go take a look at the Spanish oil, ener the energy company, and uh, take a look at uh, that. And uh, right there, 2822. They still can't break that thing down. This thing's building a base in the 28s. All I can say is Europe, watch out. At $28.22 a cubic foot, all I want to say is ouch. Ouch. All right, traders, we're out of here. 
the nurse is coming. She's going to spot that I'm doing something stupid. So this is Doc from the nursing home or from North America uh, saying uh, happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you, to all our trading friends. Later, later, traders. Catch you on the flip side tomorrow on Tuesday. Doc saying like over and out. Oh, I'll come up with a title too. Ta-da.